Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's class. My name is Dennis. I'm Andrew. We are known as the Crafty Lumberjacks. We are coming to you live from Astoria, Queens, New York. Thank yes. you so much for being here. We're even joined by our cat, Teddy Krueger, who wants to get in on the action today. This is going to be a fun, easy class. Today, we are creating a giant Pencil. upcycle pencil yes and we're actually using a shipping tube for this but if you don't have a shipping tube you can use anything in your house we even pulled a uh, toilet paper uh, sorry paper towel roll um you know it's all about just using what you have to make something fabulous i really think if you have um kids who want to get involved like doing it on a paper towel roll or even a toilet paper roll is such a great idea because it's you know, it's a little bit easier to manage. Also, as a gift, this is a great gift. If you're doing it something this small, you could fit some pencils in there. You could fit some markers. I think however, like you want to do it, like big or small, this is just a really fun project. Yeah, shout out to Michaels for having us. And of yes, course, Fiskars, we have a fun gift way that's only available to the participants joining today, watching right now that's live cute. in this class. Um, and uh, uh, just so you know, if you miss anything today, Day. the project tutorial is on our blog and then also michaels posts all these videos on their youtube channel in about 48 hours or so uh let us know where you're watching from austin maryland connecticut Orlando, colorado we got everybody here all right, all right but we should here. get to the point um <laughs> but what's great about this is that you can put um this is the shipping container and this top actually comes off yeah. So you can uh, put all kinds of goodies in there or have a, you know, one person on our Instagram said, that's great for a bottle of wine. I'm and saying, I said, oh my gosh, I actually, not? I actually think you could fit two bottles of wine, maybe. Yeah, maybe, be, you know, and if you have a rough day, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first thing you want to do is find a shipping tube. Now, we actually went to Michael's and asked if they had a shipping tube and someone in the framing department just handed us one. They were like, oh, actually we were gonna recycle this. So here you go, uh, which was really great. Now, if your shipping tube is brown, like a lot of shipping tubes out there, before you paint it yellow, paint it a base coat of white first. That's just really gonna help your yellow pop and it's gonna save you more coats. If you don't have that base coat, you might run into having to paint it about four times just to get a, like a crisp yellow, but painting it with the base coat will really help. So we're gonna be using our Fiskars mat for this. Yes, we have Washington, Philadelphia in the house, Alabama. Oh, nice. We also have a handful of Instagram friends here. Uh, if you want to, you can follow us on Instagram. That's Crafty nice. Lumberjacks across the board, Instagram, the TikTok, the, the uh, just everywhere. There's so much to keep up with now these days. Um, I think Maria, we can switch cameras. All right. We got New York in the house. Okay. So, you know, this is pretty standard. I'm just going to, to add the paint. Now, I think for painting, uh, think lighter globs of paint onto your um, shipping tube. This will, this will um, help with the brush strokes. You don't want to have too many visible brush strokes. So I'm just adding this on. Now, I'm not going to paint the whole thing because, we, you know, they're like, who wants to watch paint dry, you know? Yes, we got New Jersey in the house, Wisconsin. I'm going to be on the chat. If you ever have any questions about us, about any Fiskars products, about our giveaway today, we will be giving away the silicone mat today. This is great. We use this whenever we're painting out here. Um, it's great because it protects your surface from stains. Really and Marks, this is not intended for cutting, uh, but they do have a little grid here, which I love that all Fiskars uh, products have a little grid and ruler on there because it just makes all your crafting so much easier. Absolutely. And this paint is actually we found at Michael's. This is the folk art and this is actually called traditional school bus yellow. And we thought that was a perfect color for our pencil. But you know, I think it'd be so fun to change the color up, have a purple pencil, a pink pencil. Uh, but we really so like this because it it it's was a perfect color. tradition. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I was going to say with the silicone mat too, we love it for uh hot glue because it really does save your surfaces on that. Yeah, so, and have you all been seeing like the trend of making mushrooms with hot glue? You can do that right on here and then pull it off and then paint your little mushroom. I love that. So yeah, as you maybe can we'll see, do that for an upcoming class. Okay. <laughs> as you can see, I'm just painting it with um, a light coat. For this, we needed two coats of yellow, which I didn't think was too bad. It really does go on pretty quickly, but I think we're good with the painting. What do you think? Yes, we have a little swap out just because we want to uh, save amount of time. Uh, but, you know, it really depends on uh, the size of your container that you're using here. 
uh, which will kind of determine the sizes of things. You know, it's kind of, uh, you know, easy to put together essentially. Yeah, you know, I do think a good tip is when you're making this because all shipping tubes are different size, pull out a pencil or an image of a pencil so you can understand the ratios of like how big the eraser should be, you know, stuff like that. Yes. All, all right. right. So should we Speaking start with the eraser? Eraser. Okay, here we go. Here we go, folks. All right, so I'm going to put the silicone mat away just for now. I'm grabbing my, we're going to uh, cut, uh, we're using a piece of felt to make our eraser. And I'm actually using uh, this Fiskars cutting mat. We love this mat because it's, it has a trifold. We live in a small one bedroom apartment, uh, but you know we love to get crafty. So anytime uh, we can have stuff that's uh, folded or broken down into a few pieces for better storage, we are we're all about that because, you know, our life gets a little crazy here. And I'm sure all of you people who are crafters out there know it's just a lot of materials all the time. Teddy, Teddy, can I get over here, please? There's a little baby. Oh my God. Nice mat. Yes. Trifold. All right. So and I'm using a rotary cutter. I feel like a rotary cutter is perfect to get nice, clean, even lines. Uh, yes. My mom was a quilter. And she had all this stuff all the time, her acrylic ruler, her cutting net, and her rotary cutter. And she would, um, you know, make quilts from scratch. Uh, and I remember uh, being a kid. Did you see where the, the felt is? Oh, we just, here we go. Here. And, and seeing her, uh, I mean, I couldn't touch any of her craft supplies, of course. You can't do that. Uh, can't touch mom's craft stuff. Uh, but I would be so fascinated with her kind of making and cutting and doing all the sizing and math to make these giant massive quilts. So now essentially we're using um, the felt to make the eraser. So you can kind of decide how large you like it to be here on this one. We, let me just show the different parts of the pencil here. So here we have the little felt eraser part. And then we have the little metal part, which we're using a nice, shiny, uh, vibrant piece of paper to make yeah. that. Um, so you want to kind of, uh, you know, figure out, you know, the yeah. size there. Yeah. So I think we can kind of, this one was a bigger one. Okay. But I'm actually going to start with the top of the eraser because we found out that it's better to do the uh, top part first. So I'm actually going to use the um, yeah, lid like here. The, the lid, yeah. Which way did we say it has to go? This way, right? Yeah. Uh, this way. I think it wraps around this all way. Around. Yeah. All right. Boop. So you could cut it out right here. Okay. So I'm just going to trace my little lid here. And for this, I'm going to use a pen, but of course you can use a pencil or, uh, you know, something that you can erase a little chalk sometimes we'll do on felt because it's really easy to. I also think for this one, you could turn it upside down if you do have any pencil or pen marks. You do want to go as close to the line just so it fits right on the lid as best as possible. I think a good tip, which I see Dennis is already doing, is cut out your piece just uh, quickly, just so you're not trying to cut with the extra fabric around it. So pre-cut it and then begin to cut. Yes, Michelle asked about the cat's name. The cat's name is Teddy Krueger, named after the famous Freddy Krueger. Yes, he actually came with the name Teddy, and then... And then we found out that he won't let us sleep through the night. So, he's so we're like, terrible. you are a Teddy yes. Krueger, all right. So now I like to, um, I'm cutting the felt out here, and I'm just going a little past where I had drawn my circle. And rather than trying to turn my hand and the scissors, uh, a tip that we like to use whenever we're cutting stuff is to turn uh, the material. So I'm just kind of turn, keeping my scissor in the same spot mm -hmm. and just turning the felt. And I feel like that is a good way to get an even clean cut. I agree. You're doing a great job. Yeah, I just think it's easier to turn the material than the scissor, like Dennis said, for these rounded edges. And I do think just like Dennis did, he just trimmed good. it a little bit. I think that looks really good. Yeah. So you can use the hot glue to put that right on the lid too. Sure. So we're going to start by gluing this to the lid and it should kind of fit nice and snug and nice and even. I'm using a little hot great. glue here. You know, we were, when we were thinking of the felt, we were trying to think of what materials would look really nice. We actually thought of like a, a glittered paper as well. You know, Michaels has so many different types of uh, materials. So we were like in between glittered paper and 
foam, you know, like those sheets of foam. Oh yeah, the crack foam. foam. Um, but then we saw the felt and I, I don't know, something about the felt just like spoke to us. And again, it was all about just kind of having a time in the store, looking around to see what we can find, what would look good. And this pink felt was just, was just the perfect eraser color. Know, it was one of those um, things where you have a vision and just somehow it all comes together. And we're like, oh, oh, this is perfect. This is perfect. Uh, someone asked, where did we get the lid? The lid actually came with the shipping container. Yes. And um, you can find these at, you know, a packaging store. We found it at an office, a, uh, an office, an supply, office store. supply store. Yeah. Just any type of big box stores. Or again, like Andrew said, give the tip of um, going to Michael's. They have the frame center and just seeing if they have any of these cardboard tool, um, tubes laying around because chances are they do. And now this is great. This just fits right into the end here. And now we're going to cut our... Uh, this eraser, part of the yeah. eraser, yep. And I'm gonna go, I'm using the acrylic ruler here. And I'm gonna do about three and a half inches, you think? I would do four. Four, why not? You why know, because we can always go over it with the metal part. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I, I moved the felt, everybody. Andrew is a mover and a shaker. <laughs> Every time I put something down, it never ends up in the place where I put it. <laughs> you know, that is true. That's the way I help. Uh huh. It's it's really super helpful. All right, so I'm just kind of checking, make sure that I have the felt is going to wrap around properly. Um, and then we already decided our size there, so we're going to do four and a half inches. I'm going to go over here. I like to go corner to corner just so I can see what I'm doing, and I like to use this the mat to my advantage here and just line it up. Keep everything as even as possible. You know, we're not aiming for perfection here. We're just aiming for the best we can do. Absolutely. You know, they even have the grid here on the uh, acrylic ruler, which I love and we use all the time. And I said four and a half, right? Uh, so, and actually, you can even use um, like your acrylic ruler here. You see, you can line that up and this will help you get a nice straight line. We're doing four, though, we said, right? Yeah, four. I will say they do make it really easy to follow. I'm not very good with math and numbers and stuff like that. So I and actually part of our giveaway too, we will be giving away the rotary cutter. Yes. And now my tip for when you're cutting uh, with a rotary blade on a cutting mat is just apply even pressure towards your ruler on um, the whole length of your uh, cut. Because what happens sometimes is you start here and then you get to this part and your ruler slides oh. or something moves out of the way. So again, I like to keep it like even pressure, sometimes I'll even use my whole arm and hand and just give it nice and close. Use the ruler as your guide. One and done, baby. I One and done. Yeah. Nothing is more satisfying than getting a perfect, clean, even cut. All right, but you have one more cut to do, right? Andrew, not today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But now, the lid first is because we actually want our pencil eraser to go over yes, like that right so we kind of like mask it right onto the edge there and it goes over the lid okay andrew wants me to cut off the excess so i will oh, do that know. for you thank you so you think about an inch and a half i don't know i guess <laughs> yeah i think or a little over an inch and a half yeah, inch and a half is an good. inch and a half is great Beautiful, Michelle, thank you, Michelle. Again, I'm just gonna use this. So I'm gonna go this way, I guess. Sometimes kind of figuring out the way of the ruler is kind of like a trick of its own. I think because there's so many different ways you could kind of look at it, that sometimes it's that just like, how am I gonna... yeah, that looks pretty good. And if it's no, no, not here, perfect, here. then it wasn't meant to be. Gosh, I'm cutting with my wrong hand. Let me come to this side of the table. Sorry if you're getting a little seasick. Oh, beautiful. I love how sharp that is. Didn't seem like you really had to work for it. And of course, Fiskars, they always think safety first. So they have the little uh, kind of safety guard here, really easy to use. You just pull it down. And they actually also sell like replacement um, blades. Yeah. So if you find you use this, you know, I, I don't find like their blades dull a lot, but if you need to replace your blade, it's there's an option. I love that. 
And now, rather than hot gluing on the felt here, did you get the perfect pink eraser felt at Michael's? Yes, we did. We only shop at Michael's. Even for our clothes. Like, <laughs> yeah, so much. our food. I our have like two t shirts you know. that I wear all the time. Actually, the t shirts are great. And I did a little embroidery uh, running stitch on it that said Cat Daddy. That was very good. And I wear them like every other day. All right, well, we chose not to use the hot glue for the felt for this part just because we didn't want to see it. You know, sometimes when you use hot glue, you can kind of see. Um, it bubble a little bit just because, you know, felt is a fabric. So we thought, why not do craft paint? And a good tip is instead of just squeezing the craft paint right on, use a paintbrush that's also going to help with, you know, not seeing any, you know, glue. Yeah, because you don't want to do all this work and kind of take all this care. And then like you have like a weird random like hot glue uh, dot, like kind of seen through your felt and you're like, oh, yeah. All right, so what is what are we giving away today? We're doing the- We are giving away the- Silicone mat. The, the silicone mat. Cutter. <laughs> we'll just speak over each other so you can't actually hear Okay, us. <laughs> we're, we're doing the silicone mat, the rotary cutter, the a pair of scissors. What else did we say? Did we say um, the paper trimmer? Oh yes, we haven't gotten up to that point yet. And you know, we do these craft classes every month. Uh, we have a fun one planned for next month. Hi, Christine. We'll give you a little preview. Um, now I'm not worried too much about covering the end here yeah. because- um, We're gonna cover that anyway. You make this look cuter. Um, <laughs> quiet on the set. Oh no. And now I'm just going to use live theater folks, live theater folks. And again, I'm going just a little past or up to my um, the end of the eraser there and just trying to go as clean as I can as possible. That looks really good. I'm going to let this overlap because yeah. why not? We can have one good side, one, you know, busted side. That's okay. A little front and the back. That's not too bad. And that actually looks really nice. looks really yeah all right you know so really kind of adding these different kind of textures and elements really kind of help um give the illusion of an actual pencil and it also just creates like really nice interest you know i think that goes with any project mm -hmm. if you're able to add different textures should i try to cut this or just leave i think let's ask in the chat should i try to cut it to keep this even or just leave it overlapped let me know cut it Put it, okay. okay. Yes, and for the felt, I'm actually using the fabric scissors. You can use a wide variety of scissors for this, of course, you know, but- Everyone wants you to cut it. Pretty good. Okay, it's not my best. Well, you were on the spot. You weren't expecting to do that. And I'm like- The people made you do it. The people, it's all your fault. They're all gonna laugh at you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Not too shabby. We got a little that looks good. wonky over here, but it's okay. Little glue. And the best part, we love this uh, craft glue because it dries clear and it never dries like gloopy, like a hot glue. So we use this craft glue like a lot. Yes, I do love the craft glue. Now, a good tip is if your edges are not more going... glue. If your edges aren't, um, you know, pressing down, you want them to dry, you could use a rubber band and put it over there just to help, um, you know, everything stay down until the glue is dry. What do you think of that tip, huh? What'd you say? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I think that looks pretty good. Should we move on to the middle? Yes, move on. Because it's already three, it's, we're taking a long time. All right, so the next part we're going to do is the metal part of the, of, you know, of the pencil. It's what holds the eraser to the pencil. And what we're going to be using is 
We're gonna be using this really nice shiny paper. We got that at the paper section. And we're gonna be using the Fiskars paper trimmer, which we love. We use this for a lot of different projects. And this is another one where it kind of has an extendable arm. I'm setting this up for you. Oh, I'm doing this. Yeah, why not? Okay. Where is that extendable arm? Right here. Oh, I was doing the wrong side. How embarrassing. You can tell I'm usually the one who cuts the paper and kind of does the things that are clean and even. And Andrew provides total chaos. Wow. No, I'm just kidding. Hi from Connecticut. Hello. Michelle, he's going to do the point of the uh, pencil here. So let me go back to my original. Pencil I'll be doing brush. the hard part, if anyone's wondering. All right. So we want this to be a little larger than our pencil so eraser. Five. Yeah. So we'll do five. this at about five. Okay. Okay. Same deal. And we're actually giving away a paper trimmer today. Okay, really easy. Just line it up. You see, there's a five right there. Mm -hmm. And this is the same thing. You know, we don't see that these blades really go bad, but they do uh, offer replacement blades for these. Really easy, so good. Does it wrap around? You know what you could do is wrap it and mark it if you want. Oh, now we're getting technical. What? Now, if you really, really, really want to be precise or just like a little more cleaner, I would wrap it the other way and mark it on the back. Now, I don't think it matters for this, but I'm just saying, you know, I'm giving tips. <laughs> Dennis looked at me like, oh, come on. Well, I know. Well, I'm just trying to you yeah, know, you're do the basics. Yes. Yeah, yes. And now, did we use the craft glue for this as well? Or I think we used the hot glue we because hot this glue, is yeah. thick enough that the hot glue won't uh, be seen. So I'm actually going to do it on my paper here. And this is on a wing and a prayer. I hope anybody who's celebrating Passover has a nice Passover. And of course, we have Easter coming up. This, I think we said that this is great for like a teacher gift or if you have friends that are teachers. I'm going to start on the end here, like lining up to the edge you know, so that my edges kind of line up, kind of. Yes. Oh, that looks good. Oh, gosh. Okay. I wasn't prepared for this. Yeah. That looks pretty good. There we go. All right. Got to earn the big bucks. Where you got the shiny card talk? Yes. Everything you're seeing in today's video comes from Michael's. I think that looks really great. Okay, moving on, we're gonna add a little bit of detail oh, to gosh. this. Oh wait, let me just do a little touch up of glue here on the edge. Now, of course, because you're working with a round object, unless you're adding a curve, it's gonna be very hard to keep everything even. Uh, but we found that as you kind of do this, it's really forgiving. You can't really tell, you know, this looks busted, but we can clean that up a little. I think it's all right. All right. So what we're going to do next is we're going to cut out two little thin strips. Let's see. And this is just for detail. You could easily do this with um, a marker. You could add it with a little bit of paint. We're just gonna add two little thin lines kind of mimicking the ridges. And again, I'm using the paper cutter, of course. And this is good because you can also get nice, like clean cuts. I mean, sorry, small, small. Uh, yeah, so really what's the other word I'm looking for? Thin. Yeah, thin. Yes. All right. So now for this one, we're going to paint on the glue. Yep, and just add that to our little metal piece here. We should have looked up so we were more prepared. And actually, we probably did this in the blog post. Um, but like the parts of a pencil. The, part of a pencil. <laughs> the parts of a pencil. Oh, I didn't trim this down. I, you know, that is one thing. I know a lot of people are like nails on a chalkboard, but I cannot stand like a dull pencil writing. That gives me the heebie-jeebies. OK, what is your pet peeve, your school pet peeve? We have nails on a chalkboard. We have dull pencil writing. I've never heard that one before. I oh think my gosh, it gives, I like will shiver when I hear a dull pencil writing. Oh my gosh. I, I can't believe you never knew this about me. I did it. <laughs> All 
And actually, we could be doing this on a silicone mat. Do we have it? Yeah. Um, I guess we could be doing it on the silicone yes, mat. Yes, because then I could get an even spread of this glue, yo. Oh, I like that technique. <laughs> That's good. You know, sometimes you do something and then you learn along the way, you know? Well, you know, Alana said it best. You live. You learn. Yes, absolutely. You really do. If I only knew how true that song was when I was growing up and just hearing it. But now I get it, you know? You know, I'm going to say this glitter paper is great, but it is a little tough, meaning it literally is um, stiff. So when you're adding details with the glitter paper, sometimes you do need to glue it down with just a little bit of hot glue because it does have a tendency to kind of like pop back, you know, when you try to wrap something and it pops again. That looks really good. Yeah, so we have a little glue spillage there. You can clean it up with a little alcohol wipe or just a little wet paper towel. Even but we find, yeah, even your finger a little, you know, old fashioned way, a little, you, know, you got to smudge on your face. Mm -hmm. Yes, you absolutely. know, That's uh, but it also it will dry clear, of course, because of like the shiny texture of the paper, you will see like a little bit of spillage there. Yeah. Uh, but you know, we're not concerned. You know, on the other one, when we did it, I was like, Oh, I don't like that. But you yeah. really do not see it at all. Yeah, this one's dry. Look at that. I mean, that looks really good. Yeah, so you see like a little bit spilling out. But I think again, it's only because it's against the that silver paper. Yeah. All right, so now we're gonna, let's get to the point, everybody. Okay, we got some, some heebie jeebies here. Sharpie, children, pencil shavings all over the floor. Oh, my oh goodness. pencil breaking, chalk on hands, ooh, eraser crumbs. Oh, yes. That's like when it, you do like a scratch off lotto ticket, all those little messy bits. Beautiful, shiny paper, sell at Michael's store. Yes, they do. Pencil with worn down or missing eraser. I got my paper in a pack. Yes. We love the packs of paper there. We have so many because I can't stop buying them. I love them I so much. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the point. Now the point is essentially a cone. It literally is a cone. And I will say, I really, I don't love making cones. I find them kind of hard to do. You can find a lot of cone templates online, but the problem is, is that you need the cone, you want the cone to fit on the edge as close as possible. And if you're gonna download a template, you just don't know the sizing. So what I like to do is I like to start with a little piece of paper. Uh, is this it? No, I'll use this. I like to start with a scrap piece of paper, sorry, and a plate. I think plates are a really great way to go because most people have a lot of different sized plates and it will create a great start for your cone. Now, a lot of people do cones differently. I have found that doing a cone where you cut it just in half works just as well as doing a cone where you do a 45 degree angle or a 60 degree angle. So I think keep it simple, keep it easy. What I'm gonna do is I'm taking my plate, doing it on a test piece of paper. I'm aligning the plate halfway. So I'm just gonna do half a circle, taking a pencil and tracing it just like that. And now I'm gonna cut it out and I'm gonna check to see if that, if the sizing works. And again, just like Dennis said, I'm taking the paper and I'm turning the paper. I'm not turning the scissors. I'm just focusing on opening and closing the scissors with my hand. So then we have our piece, you wanna take the two ends and fold them into each other. Now, again, this is a little bit of a thicker cardstock. So you sometimes have to manipulate it a bit. I like to kind of like wave it around a little just so you don't get too many creases. I'm gonna be using the glitter cardstock in a moment and that really does crease just because of the thickness. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna to check to see if this lines up. Now, it is a little too big, but it really depends on how you roll it. So I'm gonna tighten the roll a little bit. 
Michelle said, soften the fibers of the paper. Yes, Michelle. And that actually looks really, really good. And I actually really like this paper in general, but we're gonna use the, this We'll use paper. the glitter paper. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna, I could actually just take this template. And now this is great too. Like cones are pretty hard, but you might find like in your crafting, you wanna make a lot of them. Uh, we've seen these for party cones. We've actually done uh, party cones for Teddy, for or for not party cones, but party hats. Party hat. okay. You know, and this was the same type of vibe that we did. We traced the plate, did this, made you know, fit it to his head. <laughs> yes, he wore it for two seconds, yes. and, and then it, it took it. like a day to make, of course. Yes. Oops, I have a little tag here. I don't want that there because it might affect the fibers of the paper. Let's see. Well, that's good. And then <laughs> I'm gonna cut it. Of course, I've lost my scissors. Oh gosh, Andrew! Here, here. No, 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 no. no. The scissors. Oh, uh, here, here. I bet he loved that Teddy party hat. Yes, he didn't. No, he didn't. <laughs> He's not a big birthday cat. No. You know, some cats they love celebrating their birthdays. They love, you know, aging. Teddy, not so much. Not so much. Okay. <laughs> that was sarcasm, Michelle, she said. Yes, of course. So we, here we have our glitter paper. I love this paper. Of course, we found this at the paper section in Michael's. And I am going to, Michelle, what did you say? Uh, manipulate the fibers. Was that it, Dennis? Yes. Yes, I'm going to manipulate the fibers. I love that. It really does make a difference. And then... I'm going to be using the hot glue gun for this. Again, like I had said before, it just helps because the paper is so thick and has a tendency to really want to push out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to align my the pencil right here, and I'm going to see how tight the cone needs to be. I do want to make sure that I'm getting a nice tip. This really does look like a little party cone or a party hat. That's very cute. And just while we're kind of working on the uh, the cone, I want to plug our next class. I believe it's going to be on May 11th. You can look at the website to find out the date. And of course, we'll share on all our social media platforms. But we're going to be making, uh, Fiskars has a lot of scissors and fun products coming out. Uh, this year, we actually made a little felt scissor caddy um, that we're going to make in our next class in May. Just want to show you that. So cute. So hopefully you'll join us for that. And of course, during that class, we'll be doing a giveaway as well. All right. So the cone is done. Let's see if it fits. I hope it does. It fits. So cute. It fits. That's really cute. OK, so now that we have our like wooden part, it's time to do the graphite. Now, you could do this a couple different ways. You could paint it, which I think would be really, really cute. But we're going to add um, just a little bit more glitter. And I found that what worked really well was using the lid of, um, just using the cap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna uh, put it so it's just half the circle. Then I'm going to trace it. Yeah, and if you don't have the lids, I know somebody was asking, you can just build this right on top of your oh, uh, paper totally. towel roll. Just attach it to the to the ends. You know, yes. you don't have to have the lid. I agree. You really don't need the lids for these. We just happen to have them. Okay, and then I'm going to cut it. I actually should have checked if this fit the lid. Actually, it does. It looks good. Okay, so now I'm going to cut this. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to manipulate the fibers, Michelle. <laughs> and I'm going to, um, oh my gosh. And then I'm going to glue it together using the glue gun. I really want to manipulate this one because it almost feels like the smaller it is, the harder it is to roll or bend. Yeah, and these glitter papers are really thick. This and that's, really again, plug for Fiskars. I mean, honestly, they cut through so many materials and it's a really great, like this is a very thick paper, but the scissors and the paper cutter 
it just glides. It glides. So I'm going to check it. I'm going to put it right on top. Oh, this actually is fitting so well. Yes. And then I'm going to glue that. And then I'm going to trim. We have like a lot of excess here. I'll just trim that off with like my pair of scissors. So I'm going to add some glue. Let's see, does that fit? Oh, it fits, it fits, you see? So cute. And now I'm just going to trim. Just like that. Now I'm going to hold it here just for a few seconds just to make sure that, you know, it's intact. Now before I glue this to here, oops, I want to make sure that it's nice and glued. Yes, we're almost there. We also thought like what would be really fun if you happen to have a cutting machine or kind of add a, a decal, um, it'd be fun to kind of add a teacher's name or something on the pencil or even so. just kind of like a fun number two or something yeah, like if that. If you uh, have great penmanship, that would be awesome too. You could just freehand it on. I think that'd be really beautiful. Now, something that bothered me with this paper was that the edges are white and I went, when it's together, it's a very, very slight detail that is kind of like, I notice it. So I was like, I don't like that. Here's a great tip. Use a permanent marker and just go on. <laughs> Michelle all these said, edges. train that paper, make it your. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just taking this and I'm just going over these white edges. Just yes, and actually you can do on that tip tip. I'm going to do that okay. too. Okay. Just, I, it stood out to me, so I wanted to make sure. Oh, you saw thank as well. you. And I'm going to do this edge, see how it disappears. Yes. You really can't see that. Now, you could do, I'm actually curious if this is the same. It's not too bad on this paper. I think because it's a thinner paper, but if you do have a paper that you really see the line with and you don't like that, do the same thing. I would use a brown marker and that would just hide the white line. So now I'm going to just add a little bit of glue in here. I'm going to line up the back and I'll glue them together. I see Lana, is it Lana or Lena? Is making a pencil with us, amazing. Oh, I love it. Oh, so that's great. Classes before yes. Monday. And Luke, you said you had a cutting machine. Why does your black pen have a green barrel. Oh my gosh, you know, I don't know. This is, this was like a, a company had sent like it. Yeah, it was like a promo something, but it actually works really well. <laughs> it <laughs> oh, does so work really well. Like all the time. Um, all right, so now I'm going to glue the point onto the, um, the brim. And I do find this part to be a little finicky if you're doing this. You just have to have a little bit of patience. I do think that kind of starting a little bit in one section, I don't want too much over spillage. So starting in one section and then kind of lifting it from there will help. Let's see. Yeah, because I feel like the real kind of um, fun moment of this pencil, if you're doing it, is um, kind of the fact that you can kind of take these pieces off. Yeah. You I know, it's like a fun too. little storage thing if you have, sure. you know, I don't know. Or if you want to reward someone in a class or or actually we have a friend, Rachel, who's a teacher that actually has requested to have this pencil once we're done with the class. And she's just going to use it in her class as like a fun little prop yes. that she's going to hang up because she has like a wall of just kind of, I don't know what it is. or something. Yeah. So we're like, yeah. So you I do it. think like, this is such a cute decoration. I, as a kid, always loved how to see how teachers would decorate rooms. I'd be like, oh, I want that teacher. They do a lot of decorations, you know? Yes. Did you ever, would like, you, would you help your teacher oh, decorate? Oh, absolutely. I was always the, like, do you want to stay and, like, help and during something? recess? And I was always like, yes, I do. And I would put out, like, you know, the Halloween cutouts on the door and yes. stuff like that. Wow. So you were always crafting. I, I were kind yeah. of decorating, crafting, making. Absolutely. And I think we could put a little bit right here, Dennis. It does help if you have a couple of hands, but oh, it's gosh. definitely doable. There you go. So I'm just going to lift it and try to manipulate it and just hold it here for a few seconds. Teacher's really don't pet. rush this. Was I the teacher's pet? Uh, I don't know about that ish. 
I wasn't the teacher's pet, but I definitely was like a goody goody. <laughs> Yeah, I don't remember too much of my childhood, so oh, please. I don't I don't know what happened. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna Where try to put this piece? on. Uh, are you talking about the white piece? Oh, the lid. It came the with lid. the um, the shipping tube. Now I will say, you just really do want to be as careful as you can with it. But there we go. That is one fine sharp. Point. I mean, that looks pretty good, I would say. Yeah, so cute. Now we got two pencils for the price of one. <laughs> Look and see, like they're a little busted, but it's okay. Well, you this was because really we've tell. been opening and closing a ton. A lot, a lot. A ton. You know, and you know, I would say this this part is actually bothering me a little bit that it's white. If I was oh, gifting this, this maybe closed. I would paint the lid a little bit first looking at that but that's just the way I did it you know but I still think no matter what it is just so freaking adorable yes and you know a lot of times we talk about um crafting a lot of uh, times like people put a lot of pressure on the end product or the end, end result end. on the end point but um you know we always like to say that crafting is about the process it's about yes. kind of the journey getting there it's about just connecting with people, kind of creating something, creating memories, and also having something that you can say, oh, wow, I did that. Yeah, totally. Um, you know, so kind of these, these type of projects projects that are just for fun, uh, just kind of, you know, to work with your hands, you know, you don't want to put too much pressure on it. You just want to, Absolutely. you know, enjoy the process. And uh, I think it's a really fun wow. I agree. I think like it's easy to kind of when you finish a project, look at the nitty gritty, the details that maybe you're not happy with. But then sometimes when you go back to it, all of a sudden you're like, oh, I don't even notice that anymore, which I love. And something this big and this um, bold, you're not going to really see those little teeny details. Look at us. I wanted to do like a head uh, house. <laughs> uh, someone asked about the cone. They're having trouble with the cone. Any tips forming the the cone forming the cone so i would say if you're having a lot of trouble try it on lighter paper first manipulate the fibers like michelle said i do think that is a really good tip and i do think using hot glue would uh really help as well now uh i'm not sure exactly what parts of the cone you're having trouble with but let me know if there's something specific that you need help with um did, did anyone make one that they want to show or where they're at right now I was actually thinking too, I would, these would be such, so cute as crayons. How cute yes! Oh crayons? my God, you should have done that. That would have been really cute. A light spray of water will help soften the fibers too. Wow, looks a like a pencil. Spray. Love it, yes, crayons. Just making the cone shape itself to fit correctly. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, I feel like that might need a little trial and error. Yeah, that's why I think using a scrap piece of paper is always the best. You could try like trimming it. And really after you cut it, if you think you're close, really work on, uh, folding the paper, meaning like if you're sometimes like doing like a, a tighter fold will give you the better, like a better circumference than doing like a looser fold. So kind of play around with that. It is so tricky because I did think about, again, like having a template to bring, but even these two shipping tubes that we have are different sizes. So it's just kind of, you know, but then once you find that cone that works, don't forget, yes. don't forget that plate. Don't forget over, that plate. Over, over, over. <laughs> All right, so okay. for today's giveaway, we are giving away a pair of the OG Fiskars scissors. Again, uh, the uh, giveaway is only open to people joining us today. Yes. Uh, we oh, are also giving away see that. the paper trimmer. Oh, that looks so good. Yes. I That's love amazing. that. That's amazing. I think it's Lana. Lana oh, I'm Lana. sorry. Lana banana. Lana. Yeah, well, Lana, that Lana. looks incredible. I Yay. love it. Um, yes. Okay. So wait, did you just say what they're yes, getting? A pair of the OG Fiskar scissors, the paper trimmer, the silicone mat, and a rotary cutter. It's a great giveaway. Yes. Uh, we do ask you to send, we're going to ask a trivia question, and we do ask you to send the answers to us either uh, through craftylumberjacks at gmail.com or slide into our DMs, Crafty Lumberjacks on Instagram, TikTok, wherever you want to reach out. And actually, instead of doing a trivia question this time- This was Dennis's idea. Yes, I, we want to hear if you have any pencil puns. Okay, so just send us a pencil pun. Now, this doesn't mean that you need to sit there and create one by yourself. You can Google it. 
You can just search it, find one, copy, paste, bada bing, bada boom. It's not who has the best pun. It's always picked at random. So don't, you know. Yes, we just want to know to... that you came and that you were here for yeah, our so life. You have to reach out to us yes. to be entered and then we'll pick at random. Um, thank you so much for joining us. We will be back next month. If you have any questions, we are always around. Again, this video will be posted on YouTube uh, yeah. in about 48 hours. And if you want to revisit the tutorial or have any other questions about the products we use today or how to make this, you can go to our blog at craftylumberjacks.com. Yes, or you can reach out to us with specific questions. We will help you out. Yes, and we hope to see you at the next class. We'll pencil you in. Oh, hi, everybody. <laughs>